there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Well, welcome everybody to the Must Read Alaska show. I'm your host, John Quick, and we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we want to thank our show sponsor, Charlie Pierce for Governor, for sponsoring the show. Because of Charlie Pierce, we're able to sp spread uh, conservative news through all the nooks and crannies of Alaska. So we really want to thank uh, Charlie Pierce for Governor for doing that. And thank you, everybody, to lis who listens in. I made the kind of the joke this week that we were number 10 on iTunes in Spain for some reason this week. So it's kind of a big, we're kind of a big deal in Spain. <laughs> so my mom thinks we're cool and people in Spain think we're cool. So we got two things going on for us this week. And um, we have a very, very special guest today. Um, we kind of have a rock star week uh, for Must Read Alaska. We had the Republican um, uh, National Chair, Ronna McDaniel last week. We had uh, the living legend, Donna Ardwin, the uh, guru of all things uh, state budget uh, yesterday. And today we have Tyler Harris, who is the executive director of the Libertarian National Committee. Tyler, welcome to the Must Read Alaska show. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're super excited. And, uh, you know, we want to give you an opportunity to kind of talk about the Libertarian Party. I'm a big fan of the Libertarian Party. And uh, before we go into our five questions, you're on the segment five questions that I host. Um, give folks just kind of an overview, like of kind of what the Libertarian Party is, because I think a lot of folks in Alaska tend to be independent. We have one of the highest percentages of nonpartisan or unregistered or undeclared voters out of any state. I think Arkansas is, uh, beats us and maybe one other state. Um, and so a lot of this independent kind of small government, uh, uh, but personal freedom uh, jive in Alaska, the Libertarian Party stands for a lot of that. So tell folks a little bit about who you are and what the Libertarian Party does without kind of going into our uh, top secret five questions that we're about to go into. <laughs> well, sure, of course, John. Uh, so as you mentioned, I'm the executive director uh, of the national level Libertarian Party, the Libertarian National Committee. What the Libertarian Party is, is we're the third largest political party in the United States. Uh, we have over 300 elected officials around the country serving in office. We run hundreds of candidates uh, every year uh, in, in elections all around the country. Uh, we put presidential candidates on the ballot uh, in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. And we're a political party that's really built around core principles of individual liberty. You mentioned that independent spirit in Alaska. We're all built around the idea that uh, every individual has certain rights that inhere in that individual, that uh, as long as you're not hurting anybody or defrauding them or stealing from them, you should be able to live your life as you see fit, uh, free of, of interference from other people. And so we're, we're a live and let live party. And uh, we are you know, the, the major alternative to the two party status quo. And um, you've been around for how long? How long has the Libertarian Party been around? So the Libertarian Party just celebrated our 50th year last year, wow. uh, founded in 1971. And, uh, and we have been uh, growing and representing uh, independent voices in the American political process for the last half century. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the, in the uh, Libertarian Party. I, I find it funny. I had a conversation with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, I'm so libertarian that I'm not even in the Libertarian Party. <laughs> like they're, they're like, and so I, I think sometimes a lot of people identify with the Libertarian Party uh, but because of those libertarian values, I think getting them to, you know, sign a piece of paperwork that says they're officially a part of the party sometimes is probably hard. So how did you kind of initially get involved in the libertarian party? Tell us that story. 
Well, I, I certainly is one, I am one of those people who were libertarian with a lowercase l before I was libertarian with a capital L. And so uh, I uh, have been involved in politics for a very long time. I got bitten by the bug early. I was a youth organizer in Northern California for the Republican Party in 2000. So I've been doing uh, politics for 22 years now and always considered myself philosophically libertarian. I came to sort of libertarian principles through uh, an, uh, a real valuing of free markets and an understanding that markets were a way that uh, everybody gets lifted into a higher standard of living and, and that we all end up better off when we're able to trade freely with each other in an open marketplace. And uh, I, I worked in, in political spaces for a number of years for candidates that I felt espoused free market values and became increasingly disappointed and disaffected as I got older, seeing what happens when those candidates I would work for get into positions of government <laughs> and then not live out those values, not live up to what I thought our shared values were. And uh, so uh, about five years ago, I uh, came out of some private sector work that I was doing and decided that I wanted to go back into political spaces. Uh, but but this time full in on the Libertarian Party, and uh, and I, I started locally as an activist, uh, organizing on the county level with the LP. Ended up working with the National Party for a while, and became the executive director of the National Party at the end of uh, at, at the very end of 2020. Nice. So um, it sounds like you've you know went from you know the. Uh community organizer all the way up to the executive director level, you've probably done every sort of job in between uh, making phone calls and sending emails out and knocking on doors and all that kind of stuff. Um, have my, you my, seen- my, my, fir my first job at Libertarian Party headquarters was literally in the mail room. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what are a couple, I'm sure the Libertarian Party has got some pretty awesome accomplishments, as you've said, um, this is a, the third most popular, you know, official um, party in the United States. You have people that are elected officials that are in these slots. My guess is a lot of local government folks, as well as, you know, some hope, some congressmen, I think, are libertarians. But tell us about some, uh, a couple, one or two major accomplishments since you've been the executive director that you're very proud of in the Libertarian Party. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll just take a recent example, some, something that I was uh, tremendously proud of. Uh, so in, in 2020, the Libertarian Party, for the first time in a generation, you mentioned we have lots of local Libertarian electeds, and, and that's absolutely correct. But for the first time in a generation elected, running as a Libertarian, a, uh, a Libertarian to a state legislative seat. Uh, and that was uh, a great guy by the name of Marshall Burt down in Wyoming. And so we've had a libertarian in the Wyoming legislature now since uh, since uh, that 2020 election. And just last month, I uh, had the really extreme honor of, of flying out to Wyoming for a bill signing uh, for a piece of legislation that Marshall had put forward, rolling back some regulation that they had around motorcycles and motorcycle modification there. Uh, people think of Wyoming as a very freedom loving state, but they've got a lot of regulations on the books mm -hmm. that, that reach into people's lives just like everywhere else. And so rolling back the regulatory state in this one way. Uh, and so significant to be there as it was signed into law, not just because this was a piece of legislation that originated with a libertarian legislat legislator moving things in a libertarian direction, but it's the first instance that we've been able to find where a bill has passed a legislature with tripartisan co-sponsorship and then becoming law. So Libertarian wrote and put forth a bill, got co-sponsors from the Republican Party, got co-sponsors from the Democratic Party, was signed into law with the Republican governor. And so I got to, to, to uh, go out there and be with Marshall as a uh, Governor Mark Gordon of Wyoming signed that into law, and, uh, and Wyomingites are a little bit freer. Folks who travel into the state don't have to comply with a uh, with, with a heavy regulatory burden that was impacting some of, some of the folks that would travel into Wyoming. It was a uh, it, it was regulation that was preventing all motorcyclists, but particularly motorcyclists with disabilities, from making certain modifications that were going to 
make their lives much easier and, and, and give them access to being able to ride. So seeing, seeing a tremendous number of people that, that we were helping and benefiting by getting the state out of their lives uh, and doing it in a way uh, that, that we were able to be the nexus that, that pulled uh, everybody together behind this effort. That's awesome. Anytime you can get the government off your back to, uh, you know, if you're trying to modify your motorcycle, they're wanting to creep over your shoulder. You know, you you're in a place where they have a little bit too over too much oversight on something. <laughs> There's just a million things like that that impact people's lives every day, and it gives me such pride to see libertarians there leading the charge, not just as as advocates and activists, which is a role we're accustomed to, but as legislators showing folks that. Uh, that we really are a party of, of governance, of being able to make their lives easier um, from, from actually, you know, not just running campaigns, but being elected and then serving and then rolling back government directly. Well, I can tell you, you know, uh, you know, just playing my cards here, I'm a registered Republican and I've been on the, cent you know, the um, central committee for two years previously, I'm not anymore. And Unfortunately, my thoughts on the Republican Party, especially in our state as of late, is this. I just kind of like do this and I shake my head and I just find myself more disappointed than uh, excited. And and I'm not somebody who just sits and points fingers. I'm in the game, playing the game, trying to make it better. As you look at Alaska, you know, what do you see for the future of the Libertarian Party in a state that seems like it's like a sweet spot for your party. You know, people that are kind of disenfranchised with big government want a different solution. They've tried the Democrat party. Maybe they've tried the Republican party. Maybe, maybe they haven't tried any and they're just kind of haven't found a home yet. What do you think the future is for the Alaska uh, Libertarian party? And, um, you know, give us a little behind the scenes peek there. Well, yeah, I mean, the Alaska Libertarian Party is fantastic, and, and I think there's a great future for the LP in Alaska. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's a, it's a state that, that uh, temperamentally is predisposed towards libertarian thought. I think converting that thought into libertarian political action is always the challenge. Um, it, it, it sounds like just in your own uh, sort of personal story, you're not far from what my personal story sounded like. So, you know, I, I, I look I look forward to that capital L in your future. <laughs> but I, I it, it's, uh, you know, it really is uh, a state that gives us a lot of great opportunities. Our Alaska Libertarian Party uh, held their convention just a couple of weeks ago elected a great leadership team there. Certainly any of your listeners who are eager to get involved could not be a better time. Uh, we're running candidates for U.S. Senate, candidate for U.S. Uh, candidate for U.S. Senate, candidate for U.S. House in Alaska. Uh, we've got uh, exciting campaigns to get involved with. It's a great party. We're growing the infrastructure in the state. More and more people are reaching out every day saying, Look, you know, we need an alternative to what's going on. We, we've been in this paradigm for all of our lives where Democrats and Republicans hand power off and we see problems just get worse. We see more debt pile up. We see, uh, you know, we, we just we're, we're not getting the solutions that people want, no matter where they're coming from politically. And there needs to be a real mix up to that status quo. And, and so I think there's great opportunities for the LP in Alaska uh, as there are in other places around the country to really be attractive as the third voice, the third option, uh, the, the, you know, really the meaningful vote of opposition to what's going on right now. Yeah. The, um, one of the things I think you guys have done well at, which might seem like a kind of something that doesn't matter, but whoever runs your Facebook account is hilarious. They, they, were, <laughs> they, uh, they do these like, you know, little pot shots that, and, you know, kind of satirical humor and it just cracks me up. So whoever's running it, man, give them a pat on the back because um, they're able to induce laughter and humor. And often they, uh, you know, in the political realm, it's tough to uh, find joy sometimes. And man, they've done a great job. So um, then my last question is this, Tyler, how does somebody, let's say somebody's listening to this podcast and and they want to get involved in the Libertarian Party, or maybe they've been mulling over um, 
uh, wanting to become an official member or, you know, hear from a candidate that's a libertarian candidate in Alaska? How does somebody go about finding out more information or getting connected to the Libertarian Party? Sure. Well, for the National Libertarian Party, you can always visit us online at lp.org. Uh, that is our main home on the World Wide Web. Uh, if you're really old school, you can also reach out to us via phone, 1-800-ELECT-US. During business hours, you'll get one of our hardworking uh, staff members, and uh, we're always happy to have a conversation with you and to talk to you about whatever questions you might have for us. Uh, on Twitter, we are at LP National. Uh, and as for the Alaska Libertarian Party, uh, alaskalp.org at alaskalp.org on Twitter. And you can come check out the Alaska Libertarian Party who's gonna be represented at Arctic Comic Con, uh, April 30th through May 1st. Uh, and not only will they be down there, a lot of our great activists, but also uh, Sean Thorne, our US Senate candidate and Chris By, our candidate for US House. So come on out and meet our Libertarian candidates in person. It's a great way to get involved and uh, come check us out. I love it. I, you're the only party that would go to ComCon, which is just amazing. It's it's a it shows that you think outside the box, and I think that's uh, a great attribute uh, asset to have. Um, and you're willing to go places that maybe other parties aren't willing to go to meet normal people, everyday people that care. We about want to meet people where they are. Yep. So I think that's awesome. So kudos to you for doing that. So folks. Do you have anything else before we kind of sign off? Any last minute thoughts or anything that you wanted to add and forgot to add? Um, I'll give you the floor for a couple minutes if you got anything else. Sure. Well, just a just words of thanks to you, John, and thanks to your listeners. It's it's great to be here. And uh, the Libertarian Party is doing fantastic work. Uh, please do check us out. Please do get connected. And uh, much more exciting things to come. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Tyler. You're welcome anytime on the show. And uh, I want to uh, thank uh, our sponsor, Charlie Pierce for Governor, for sponsoring the Mustard Alaska show. Because of his sponsorship, we're able to get the conservative news out all over Alaska. And I want to thank our listeners. You can tune in tomorrow. James Bazin will be on the Mustard Alaska show talking about the inside scoop on Alaska politics over the last week. So uh, until then, uh, signing off from somewhere in Alaska, I'm John Quick, your host, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks so much.